It's only make believe. It's only make believe. I have three texts this morning. It's rather short. It's only make believe. Isaiah chapter 66. In the last line of verse 3 says, Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, None did answer, and when I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. And then we slip over to the next prophet, Jeremiah chapter 7, and verse 24. But they hearkened not nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. And then we slip over to Romans in the New Testament, chapter 1. And verse 21, Paul writes, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Amen. Most of us in here are probably old enough to remember a fellow named Conway Twitty. Anybody ever hear him? Amen. Conway Twitty. He was a country and western star. Country western music star. And he had this hit song. And the name of that song was It's Only Make Believe. You remember that song? Yes. yes. It's Only Make Believe. Folks, I would say to you this morning, that you and I are now living in a land that has become a land of fantasy. It's true. A land of make believe. A land where man has chosen to reject the truth. Dina, Miss Dina and I were talking the other day about some family issues on both sides of my family. And how young people today, they're living in their own little make-believe fantasy land world. That's right. And eventually, reality is going to slap them right upside down. And many of them will not know how to handle it. The result of our nation rejecting the truth, the result is the same result that the nation of Israel faced. The result has become a land of delusion. where people have been given over to the imagination of their own hearts. And we see and we hear one lie after another being told, and we have a society who wants to pretend that those lies are the truth. How tragic. With each passing day, it seems like 
man becomes more deluded and trapped in his own little land of fantasy. Reality is not going to be pretty when it gets, folks. Our land is running, this nation is running aimlessly toward destruction. Living in a world of make-believe. Children. Our young people. Young adults. Are playing games of pretension. <coughs> they have wandered and strayed from reality. Living in a nation where the so-called intelligentsia of America, the academic institutions of America, the politicians of our land, they themselves, it would seem, are living in a land of make-believe. caught up in their own little fantasy and out of touch with reality. If a man went to Washington, D.C. looking for a little bit of common sense, he'd get lost. Amen. I want to say to you this morning, it's time for the church in America to sound an awakening trumpet. Amen. Amen. The church must sound the trumpet. Folks, there's nobody else to do it. And the first thing we need to see and understand is this. You and I are living in a fantasy land where the government has become that entity that has promised to meet all the needs of man. A fantasy land where people are looking to the government to meet their needs. That's where we're at. Amen. It's an illusion. It's an illusion that believes that government can fulfill man's utopian ideas. That's how the Antichrist is going to be so successful coming into power, folks. He's going to promise folk a utopian world where everybody's equal, happy, and has everything. A socialist created state controlled by the elite intelligentsia of our day. That's where we're at, folks. And it is leading us in a direction that is away from God's prescribed model of life as found in the Word of God. Personal ownership. Personal responsibility. Personal accountability is God's prescribed method for man. God has given us divine commands in His Word. We go back to the Old Testament and God gave us the law. He gave us the Ten Commandments. Now we, as the church today, we are under grace. That doesn't mean we ought to just go along happily disobeying God's law. God's law says, Thou shalt not steal. Well, that's still 
the moral law of God. You and I as Christians shouldn't be going out stealing. Not only is it against the law of God, it's against the law of our land. Thou shalt not steal. Listen, that doesn't only apply to you and I as individuals, it applies to a nation as well. God didn't stop there. He also said, Thou shalt not covet. A socialistic government, folks, is a government, a government of covetousness and thieves. They have to steal from those who have in order to give it to those who covet. That's what socialism is all about. And that's where our nation is headed today. Socialism seeks to bring about a heaven on earth believing this illusion that somehow a totalitarian government is the answer to man's problem. That would seem to say that government becomes man's God. Socialism seeks to make everything fair. The all-powerful state, but it's been proven time and time again Throughout history, it's been proven to you and I, even in the very day and age that we live, that the all-powerful state has never made anybody happy. To the contrary, all totalitarian states have ever done is to create a hell on earth. Because eventually those who have get tired of what they have being taken away from them and they decide what's the use. I might as well get over on the half not side and just be a taker. Human rights. Human rights have become defined today as government handouts. Well, a politician promises the young people a new phone. And they run down vote for them. They promise them a free education. And they run down and vote for them. Living under the delusion and the illusion that they're going to get something for free. They guarantee other people that they're going to meet their needs by stealing from somebody else. It's called class warfare, folks. And every time this fantasy of socialism is believed, the result is disaster. Ask Pastor Raphael back there what he saw happen in the land of Cuba. And ask him what he sees and the parallel that he sees between what's happening in America today and what happened in Cuba years ago. And he'll tell you that he can see it very clearly. Because he lived through it and yet we are living in a nation full of folks who are deluded and blinded to the truth of what is happening. Amen. Every time it's been tried, it's become a disaster. And folks, I want to tell you, 
This is where America is headed today. If she does not turn around, she is headed for disaster. And she's not far from it. We're making believe. We have a society that is pretending and believing that government can meet all of its needs. And it can't. It's the church in America that needs to sound the trumpet to awaken the people. Second thing we need to see is that we are living in a land where we're making believe that any two people can form a marriage. <laughs> it's make believe. It's pretension. That anybody can get married. I saw, there are no children in here, I saw an article the other day I believe it was here in Florida where a man was guilty and was found guilty of having sex with a goat. Now the next thing you know, it'll be going to the Supreme Court and he'll be wanting a license to marry that goat. <laughs> and the goats in Washington will probably give him a license. <laughs> Lord help us. That's ridiculous, but that's the mentality of our nation today, folks. We're making believe that any two people can form a marriage. Now listen, marriage is an institution that's been around for a long, long time, long before any of us were ever born. It's an institution that was created and ordained by God. That's right, amen. Amen. It was also God who set forth the parameters for marriage in His Word. Its definition has been constant and undisputed until recently when the government became God and decided who could and who couldn't get married. Do you all understand that only a male and a female coming together can produce children? Only a man and a woman can maintain a family as God ordained the family to be. Amen. Praise God. He created them male and female. You think about it. I know that, you know, logic has something that has escaped our nation. Logic is something that has escaped the mentality of the man of our day. But marriage between a man and a woman is the only logical solution to human production. God commanded Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply in populating the earth. I've got news to for you. Two women can't populate the earth. Two men can't populate the earth. Why? Because God did not design it that way. Parents are bound by a legal contract to establish the home for their children. We're living in a confused nation. A nation that no longer knows or understands what marriage truly is. And what's happened is man has sought to change God's legal definition so those of the same sex can be married. It's 
nothing but a mere marriage of make-believe, folks. They pretend to be married. They pretend to have a family. They pretend to be married and to be in love like two little ten-year-old children. And then what do they do? Because they're unable to produce children themselves, they go out and they adopt other people's children. Then they say, oh, we have a family. The make-believe marriage now has become make-believe parents that is pretending to have a family. When reality and truth and the Word of God says that they cannot rationally be defined as a marriage. Amen. There is nothing, absolutely nothing positive about the homosexual lifestyle. The homosexual community, folks, is overrun by disease and depression. Many of them are on psychotic medications in an attempt to cope with their sin. It is a community that is filled with suicide. A community that is filled with infidelity, domestic violence. And if the truth be known, the homosexual has a shorter lifespan than the heterosexual. It's a lifestyle of error and defiance against God, which has promised nothing but His judgment upon it. We've been studying Jude in here on Wednesday nights. Jude says it is a behavior, it is an act against nature, it is unnatural. Amen. The redefinition of marriage in America will only lead to more degradation, folks. It will only lead to more destruction and more judgment, all in the name and the game of make-believe. We're making believe that just any two people can form a marriage. <coughs> And it is the church's responsibility in this nation to sound the trumpet. And the sad, tragic reality is many Christians sitting in pews and many preachers standing in pulpits refuse to address the issue for fear of offending somebody. Third thing I want to address, and the last thing, we're making believe that we can have a moral society without God. That's right. We're making believe that we can have a moral society without God. Let me ask you this. If there is no God, then what is the standard? Who defines the standard? Who decides what's right and what's wrong? What happens when the government decides that it's wrong for you and I to have the Bible? What happens when the government decides that it's wrong for you and I to assemble here in public and to preach against sin because it's defined as hate speech? That's what happens if we allow the government to define what's right and wrong. Rather than Amen. the Word of God. We're making believe that we can have a moral society without God. Let me ask you this morning, how's that working out so far? 
You turn the news on lately? It's enough to make you sick. Amen. It's enough to make you not want to even turn it on. Doesn't seem to be doing so well from what I see. You want to know how bad it is? Just consider America's past. Consider the history of this nation and then consider the two major candidates that have been nominated for president of the United States. That defines a lot about where we are as a nation today, folks. Now, atheism. Atheism would say that you don't have to believe in God in order to be moral. That you don't have to acknowledge God to enforce the norms and the values. Well, what are the norms and the values if you don't have God? Who defines what's normal? Who defines what's valuable? Unbelief in God has weakened the foundations of America. Amen. And unbelief in God has weakened the foundations of this nation. Not only that, it has weakened our influence as Christians on society. Atheism. The atheist of our day will often point fingers and accuse Christianity and other religions of producing war and being carnage-producing machines. And undoubtedly, folks, there have been many crimes committed in the name of religion. Yet, nothing, nothing to such the extent as ungodly atheistic states have done. Consider the mousy tongues of China. The Stalins of Russia, the Pol Pots of Cambodia, and the Hitlers of Germany who have murdered and slaughtered millions. You know what those murderers take comfort in? They take comfort in their belief that there is no God that they will one day have to answer to and be judged by. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 10. Psalm 10, verse 4. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God, God is not in all his thoughts. Verse 5, his ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffs at them. Verse 10, he crouches and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Verse 11, he has said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see it. That's what the atheist believes. America continues 
steadfast in her quest to rid this nation of God, folks. The government has expelled God from the public school system. The government has expelled God from the public squares. The government has expelled God from the government itself. What's the consequences? An increase in crime. Teen pregnancy. Suicide. Gang violence. Look at the streets of Chicago. Consider the streets of Chicago and hear this and hear it well, folks. What's happening in Chicago in the streets daily is a plague that will eventually come to every city in this nation if we continue on the path we're on. That's right. Amen. Lawlessness in the streets. Failure of our education system to educate our children. You know the young folk today who work in stores, if they didn't have a cash register to tell them how much change to give you back, they wouldn't know. Amen. Because they're not even taught simple math in school anymore. They're taught that it's okay for Johnny and Bill to be married. General immorality among the youth in this nation is spreading like wildfire, folks. Mass shootings, if you haven't noticed, are on the increase. You're not shocked or surprised at all today if you turn your TV on and you hear that a mass shooting's happened somewhere. Why? Because it's just become common, normal behavior. In our world as well as in our nature. See, sound morals are based on a belief in God. Sound morals are based on the belief in divine revelation. And sound morals are built on the fact that God says there is coming a day of judgment. That's right, amen. That's right. History has proved it. History has proved that civilization, civilizations that are not built on sound morality are destined for destruction and failure. The founders of this nation, the founders of this nation did not disregard our Creator. The founders of this nation did not disregard the one and only true ruler of this universe. The abandonment of truth in our nation, folks, is leading us towards collapse, failure, judgment, and destruction. We're making believe that we can have a moral society without God. And it is the church's responsibility to sound a trumpet that will awaken the people. In closing, let me say to you, for the last 35 years, I have followed the political situation in our nation very carefully. Listen, a preacher can't do his job in the pulpit unless he knows what's going on in the world, unless he knows what's going on in the nation. I believe 
believe that the church and the Christians today need to stand up and be a voice. I believe we ought to go out and we ought to vote. And I believe we ought to get in our prayer closets at home and we ought to gather here corporately as a body of believers and pray for the leadership and the government of this nation. Amen. Because God knows they need it. And I believe that as Paul wrote in Romans 13, that government is an ordained institution of God. Just like the church in marriage. And I don't believe that the government, nor a man or a woman, is the solution to America's problems. The solution to your problems, the solution to my problems, the solution to the nation's problems, the solution to the world's problems is Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only one who can solve and resolve the problems of the world. Jesus Christ is man's only hope. He is America's only hope. He is the world's hope. Let me ask you this morning, do you know Him? As you sit here this morning, can you say in your heart with absolute certainty, Preacher, I know that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of my life. Can you say, Preacher, I truly believe that Jesus Christ was God Almighty in the flesh. That He came to this planet from His home in glory. That He walked among men, lived a sinless life. He was born of a virgin. That He gave His life freely on the cross and died for my sins. And three days later, He arose from the dead. And I have accepted Him into my life by faith. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have been born again and I have a home reserved in the eternal portals of glory. You hear this morning and you can't say, Preacher, I know I've been born again. I'm right with God. I have a right relationship with God. I want you to be able to say that before you leave this place this morning. And so if you're here, and you'd like to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would invite you to come. Let me pray with you, pray for you this morning as we sing this closing hymn. If you're here, you need prayer for any reason, whatever you come, I'll be happy to pray with you and pray for you.